just get the recording started and say welcome everybody to the Portland Photographers Forum uh, November meeting. We're delighted that you're here. Um, we expect to have uh, uh, quite a few extra guests tonight. Um, our main speaker is Fran Foreman and I'll be introducing her um, uh, for the second hour. Um, and we're, uh, we're very grateful to her for staying up late. Uh, she's on the East Coast, so we, we definitely want to get her started on time at 8 o'clock. Um, so we also have a few other things this evening. We've got a, a, a special presentation from Steve Blair. We have a couple of uh, short format presentations from uh, um, Robert Bergstrom and uh, Pete Gomina, who I understand is standing in for uh, Evan Schneider. Is that right, Pete? That's right. Evan okay. is here uh, watching, but I'll be running the presentation tonight. Okay, that's great. Um, and then we also have our uh, November photo challenge, Impressions of Autumn, and hopefully we can get that all packed in here uh, in the next hour. Um, I wanted to do just a few quick announcements, but not spend much time on that and make sure everybody uh, is keeping up with the newsletters. Um, if you haven't taken a look, a look at the November newsletter and the supplement, um, please do take a look at that. There's a lot, of, a lot of information there, but I did want to mention that coming up, we've got our election of new board members. Um, and there was, a, there was a, a, a special newsletter supplement talking about uh, the four candidates. I won't, I won't repeat that here, but wanted to let you know that uh, as a member, you'll be getting a ballot, uh, an email with a ballot, a link to an electronic ballot um, in the next day or two. And if you would please um, uh, don't, uh, don't ignore that, but go ahead and vote so that we can officially elect uh, these, these four new board members for the, uh, for the 2022-2023 uh, term. That would be great. Um, also wanted to mention that uh, the PPF book, uh, this year's book called A Break in the Clouds, which has been uh, the product of a lot of hard work, uh, primarily from Pat Welly, is, is complete, it's finished, it's available at um, Blurb, and we've yet to put um, up that link in our bookstore, but we'll try to do that in the next couple of days as well. Um, also, just stay tuned to the newsletter. Next month, uh, on the 20th of December, we'll be having our virtual holiday party via Zoom. So there'll be information about that. Uh, there will be a print exchange like we've had in the past. So if you're interested in doing that, please start thinking about that. And you'll see some instructions coming along soon. Um, if you're a first time visitor, we, we welcome you. and. Uh, you know, would ask that you uh, check out our website at portlandphotographersforum.com and uh, find out more about us. Uh, and then specifically, I wanted to welcome uh, three new members, uh, Leanne Trevet, Chris McCord, and Elliot Crowley, um, who've joined very recently. I think Elliot joined today. So if you're on the call, Elliot, uh, welcome. So um, without further ado, um, Steve Blair, are you ready with your uh, presentation? I uh, am. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to allow the screen share here. And you should be able to go ahead and get started. So, if I can get this to work right. Um, I just decided to do something a little different that uh, some of you have seen some of these, but anyway, this is a little thing that uh, there's a musician, Jean-Michel Jarre, that was pretty good, pretty famous in the late 60s, early 70s. And I thought that this, these uh, images would kind of go into his music. So I call it twisted. So some of you know, I've got a pretty twisted mind, so. We'll see what, hopefully you can hear it when I get started here. Thank you. 
Thank you, Steve. Hopefully you can nice, do that. Steve. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> you definitely Thanks, drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, Steve. Uh, my yes. suggestion for any future things would be to uh, cancel the toolbar and the film strip and you'd get more screen real estate at the bottom. Oh, sure. Okay. Make it bigger. Good idea. Really wild. Very what, cool. What application did you use uh, to put that together? Photoshop. Or, well, Photoshop to do the images and Lightroom <clears throat> to put in the music. So, okay. And so you ran it through Lightroom as a, a slideshow. Yes. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, next, we've got uh, Robert Bergstrom is going to do uh, his short format presentation. Robert, are you ready? I'm ready. So right. I got about tw 20 minutes. Yeah, including question time. Including qu questions. OK. So I uh, share the screen. Yeah, you should be able to do it right now. There we okay. go. Uh, does everybody see my Lightroom? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, well, I am a a newer member of uh, PPF. I'm a, a retired physician. I retired in uh, 2018. Uh, before I ever got into photography, I was an armchair traveler, 
and especially interested in uh, polar exploration, which is what these books are. Um, uh, in uh, 2016, my wife and I went to Norway and Sweden for our first trip to Europe, and I bought, I brought along a little Nikon point and shoot and half of the pictures came out really blurry. So I decided that I better uh, learn how to use a camera and learn something about photography. So once I retired, uh, I got into it more seriously and uh, uh, met Mark Fitzgerald and uh, worked with him with Lightroom for the last, uh, last three years. And it was Mark that told me about uh, the existence of PPF this spring. So uh, really grateful for the opportunity to talk about some of my uh, images. Hey, Robert, before you start, I would yeah. suggest the same thing, making making your side panels and the... Uh, How about yes. that? I'll go to full screen. Yes. Perfect. So so these are, so I really enjoy taking, uh, I don't know what you call it, maritime photos, seascapes, boats. So that's what this uh, short collection is. And I'll just try to say a little bit about <coughs> each one. Uh, this was a fishing boat in Tofino uh, in BC from, I think from 2018. And this is when I was still shooting in JPEG. And uh, about a month after this was when I, uh, took Mark's class in light, Lightroom. And I really like these, I really enjoy these working boats because as you can see, this guy doesn't worry if his boat is dirty or not. He doesn't spend a lot of time polishing it. Uh, and these are some fishing boats at uh, sunset, after me? sunset in uh, Yakuna Bay in Newport. And uh, I like to go to Port Townsend once or twice a year and take pictures along the waterfront. This is a, a paddle border at sunset. And this picture I had, had posted in the, uh, the exhibit last month at the Oregon Society of Artists. Uh, this one I also had at the, uh, in the PPF uh, exhibit last month. And this is... Uh, a rowing club in Port Townsend. Uh, they seem to get out at six or seven in the morning, pretty much every every day of the year, I believe. Uh, and this is another one from Sunrise at Port Townsend. Of, uh, I think, I, at first I thought this was a fishing boat, but I think it was converted to be a cruiser. And then is Mount, Mount Rainier in the background. Uh, and that's an evening at the marina in Port Townsend. Uh, and this, this boat was for, I told my wife this boat was for sale and she said no. <laughs> uh, and this was a, a sunrise in Port Townsend with the, uh, the mountain range in the distance. Uh, Robert, if you could, uh, one quick thing too, if you could tilt your screen down a little bit, we see your nose up. Perfect. Yeah, okay. uh, and this was another guy out rowing uh, early in the morning at Port Townsend. Uh, this was a sunrise at Whidbey Island at Coopville from this summer. This one is from Anacortes. There is a, a city park in Anacortes that overlooks the marina and also has this beautiful view out to, to the east toward the mainland and the, and the Cascades. Uh, now this one was taken on a, on a cloudy morning and uh, it was, the light was kind of flat, but I did like the orange color in the boat and I guess I was kind of fascinated by all the tires he has along the side of his tugboat. I guess that's so he doesn't smash into things. And again, it, the light was pretty flat and gray on this morning. So I found some colorful uh, crab pots.
Mm. Also on a gray morning, but sometimes the, the detail shots sometimes work on a gray morning when other things wouldn't. Uh, and here I just like the reflection of the crab pots in the water. Uh, now this is uh, in the San Juans on the ferry from Anacortes to Orcas Island. Uh, and this guy uh, probably spends a lot of time polishing and cleaning his boat to keep it looking so nice. Uh, and this is the ferry landing at Orcas Island. Uh, I took this shot from the from the ferry boat as we were pulling away. I really like that guy's <laughs> boat. Uh, and that was uh, another fishing boat in the uh, in the San Juans. Uh, and this was from uh, Sunrise at Anacortes again. I believe that that uh, tugboat has something to do with the oil refinery and the oil tankers that go in and out of there. Lovely, Robert. Thank you. Uh, now this schooner is, uh, is at Coopville and <clears throat> I put kind of a vignette with some wood grain around it in Photoshop. Uh, and I should give credit to, to uh, Susan Bean who helped me learn more about Photoshop. And uh, this, was, this one was kind of an experiment, but I liked how it turned out. And I had to get down low enough so that the flag was over the sky and not over the land. Uh, and this is actually the same boat, but it, at sunrise. Uh, and I like the reflections on the water. And again, I was playing around with Photoshop and kind of made it into a monotone. And now this other I Photoshop idea that I had was to take an, uh, a nautical chart in superimpose it over part of the part of the photo. Like so it. this was a photo from Port Townsend from the marina there at sunset with really nice reflections in the water. And the, uh, the nautical chart is of uh, Vancouver Island and parts of the San Juan Islands. Uh, and I try to put the, the, uh, the chart just over the water and the reflections and not on the boats and the dock so much. Nicely done. Thank you. And one other one with the, uh, with the maps. <laughs> this, this ship so is, is a fishing boat in the Faroe Islands where I visited in 2019. Um, and the, the map is of Iceland and Greenland in the North Atlantic, and it's from uh, a 1770 atlas. So again, I tried to put the map over the sky and I did keep the border the whole way around, but tried to keep it off of the, the boat. Um, I guess here the theme is man against the sea and it always amazes me that sailors can go out in these ships and even, even a modern steel and diesel ship can seem pretty fragile against, uh, against the North Atlantic. So that was all I have. I probably uh, talked too fast and went too fast, but we have time, so. Robert, one quick question. 140 yeah. characters or less. Do you have a boat? Or do you wish you had a boat? I and used in, to. In, in regards to that, do you want us to help try to talk your <laughs> wife into letting you yeah, buy that's it? That's right. <laughs> right. Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, 
I had a sailboat for about five years and the, the biggest trouble with having a sailboat is that you have to be a do-it-yourself mechanic. Uh, and I took my wife out in it. We made a couple of trips down to Astoria a couple of summers, uh, but she wasn't as enthusiastic about it as I was. And we ended up selling the sailboat last uh, February. Uh, but you can still take pictures of sailboats, so. <laughs> Is it the same? Taking the photographs as opposed to actually being in the sailboat? Uh, it's different, you know, it's, it's definitely different in, in, you know, definitely it, it's nice to be out in the boat and be able to take pictures from the boat. Um, uh, but I guess I still have dreams of, uh, I don't know, going to, uh, the Puget Sound and, uh, getting a, a motorboat or some kind of a cruiser. Well, Robert, I think you're onto something there. Um, I think there's lots of great pictures to, to do that with. Um, I, I enjoy the pictures with the maps, and especially if it's a map of where the boat is or where, where you're talking about rather than some other place. Um, yeah, I have some, I have, a, uh, I don't show it on here, but I have a picture, uh, Oh, of a, of a schooner in Stockholm. And I search the internet and send away to a place in Denmark that sold maps of Sweden and the Baltic Sea. <laughs> um, I, I have to tell you, I like those better than the ones with <clears throat> um, added texture mm. around the image. Uh, I'm afraid that did, the pictures are so interesting that that didn't really add much to it for me. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was kind of an experiment. Well, I, I hope you keep it up. Well, thank you. So, Robert? Yeah. I, I love your pictures of Port Townsend, where I lived for 30 years. Oh, oh, and, that's great. <laughs> and I and I rode with that rowing club for 10 years. So that was fun. Just okay. They, it seems like every time I go up there, <laughs> there are people out there every every single morning. Whether, oh, absolutely. Whether Every, yeah, every day. Yeah, when I, I, whenever I get up there, I always try to go out at sunrise and sunset and walk along the, the waterfront with my camera and just look for interesting things. Isn't that where they, Johanna and Robert, isn't that where they have the wooden boat festival every year? Yes, but it's been canceled for the last two years. Yeah, the last two right years. Now. Robert, I was just curious about, um, you know, how you might plan to use these images, especially the ones that include the maps. I almost feel like I'm looking at uh, part of what could be a book, you know, with oh. with interesting um, locations and and the boats that ply the waters. Uh, what what were you thinking about when you were making these, as far as how to display them? Um. Well, this one and this one I, I had printed and I did show them at the, the Artist Society, I think in June or July for the members show. But uh, yeah, it hasn't gotten any further than that. I've got, you know, a number of other ones that, that I have been working on over time. Um, but I say these are probably the two that, that turned out the best. Uh, one of the nice. things that that might like might interest me is like little stories like that the next fishing boat uh, there uh, or even this one is you know like knowing like the the captains or where they've gone uh, maybe a little uh, little trip on the map you know like these guys go out to this particular area and and like little stories um, like your books there uh, little stories about like. Oh, what they've experienced, you know, you mentioned the Atlantic and the Baltic actually is actually relatively easy. Uh, you know, some of those, uh, but there's stories in every one of those. Uh, yeah, you know, in, in, in Stockholm, there's, um, 
an, uh, a part of the waterfront where there's a number of old boats, which look like they've all been converted to, to liveaboards at this point. And, and at the head of each, of each one, they have a little sign that says this boat hauled lumber on uh, such and such a lake from 1900 to 1940. And in 1960, it was converted to a, to a cruising vessel. And, you know, it has some history of it like that. And if you could find like, you know, a Captain Hook that took that, uh, that first trip on that <laughs> boat or, uh, you know, it's like, uh, and that he, uh, you know, he had a wife or he had three wives, one in each port or whatever, you know, make it uh, like a little bit of a human interest uh, story. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, it's like, uh, I'm kind of thirsting for a little bit more than just like the map and the boat. Uh, 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 well, I, I have a, a whole other series of, uh, of Sweden, of the Gota Canal, in a, a trip my wife and I did there uh, a couple years ago uh, with the, uh, you know, an old cruise ship from, the 19, from about 1900 and, you know, the uh, old captain of the boat. And uh, yeah, no, that's a good suggestion. I like that idea. Robert, the photograph that you're showing right now with the map, I think the map does a great job of not only adding interest and context to the photo, but also there's a number of leading lines that complement the leading line of your boats. Um, and I think that's really cool. Yeah, and I kind of like the uh, like the orange color of uh, Vancouver Island kind of go goes with the orange color of some of the wooden wood on the on the boats. Yeah, that's kind of one of the tricks is to put the maps in, in such a way that it, that it complements the, the rest of the image and doesn't uh, detract from it. So Robert, my, my last question is, is like, when are you going to get a big boat so you can take PPF members out on a photo tour? <laughs> mm, there you go. Well, uh, I will uh, announce it when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody. I enjoyed it. Thanks, Robert. That was great. I really appreciate it. Very well done. Very well done. Thank you. All right. And next, uh, Pete, if you are ready, you can take the screen. I, okay. I will be ready momentarily. Okay. Um, and screen a, a little background can you hear me yeah we got yeah. you it looks okay, good. good um a little background evan and i have traveled out to the painted hills and the ochico mountains area in central oregon oh probably seven or eight times by now um, we were, this uh, particular um, video slideshow is from our trip in June, uh, and we were there just before the great heat wave hit, and it was already um, high 80s, low 90s all day long when we were there, and it was, it was uh, an adventure, I'll say. Uh, the previous time we had been out for an extended trip is almost exactly five years before, within two weeks of the same date in June. And we had nothing but rain and sleet. And actually on the last day we, we were there, uh, we were in a campground a little higher up in the Ochocos and we woke up to find our, the picnic table in the campground we were staying in covered in ice. And when we took a trip up, uh, back up the road into the Ochocos it had snowed that night. So, you know, I think that weather plays a really big part in the adventure that, uh, that we, we have. Um, and, uh, you know, it's all about um, making, making the most of what you have when you're out there and really enjoying yourself uh, while you're doing it. 
Um, and let's see, I'll, I'll just uh, leave it at that. Um, doo -doo. We'll go up to full screen and away we go. Are you getting any sound, Pete? Yeah. Are you not? No. Nope. Yeah, we're no. not hearing anything. Oh, my. So, so, Peter, when you get ready to share the screen, there's a button you click that says use computer sound, I think is what it says. Oh. <coughs> See it? Oh, down here. All right, can you hear me now? No, I can't hear you. Yeah. How? Yeah, no, no sound on the presentation yet. Fascinating. All right, let's back up and try this again. Well, maybe you could sing. Uh, well, you, <laughs> let's see. Um, where is my screen share button? Stop share. Share screen. Sometimes share there's a, a share sound. Yeah, it's down in the lower left. I've got share sound. If you if you've got that checked. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, to share your computer audio, please install the Zoom audio device. Please restart your audio sharing application, such as the media player, after install. Oh, God. I had no idea. Um, hang on. Start my... Audio sharing, and we'll see what happens. There we go. All right.
Very nice. Oh, yeah. there, there it is. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, Peter? Peter, I'm always impressed at how careful your compositions are. They're, well, they're just <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Uh, about about three quarters of that show is all Evan's work. Um, I just sent him a few extras to fill in a couple of spots, but or uh, one thing and another. But that's that's mostly Evan. You have to understand that when Evan goes out with a camera, it's on his neck from sun up until sundown, and then maybe for a couple hours afterwards. So, yeah, he's uh, he never stops. You know, it's funny, Peter. I was trying to think to myself, oh, which ones of these did Peter take and which ones did Evan do? And I, I could really only assign the black and whites to you and the quirky portraits to Evan, but uh, the rest of it I couldn't decide. So they yeah. were beautiful pictures, both of you. Yeah. Really good work. You know what I like? I like the way you've mixed in the black and whites. I think that's very effective. Yeah, so it looks like you guys are having a great time. Yeah. Pete, I'm glad you uh, got the sound going because that really added to the experience of seeing these lovely images. And I have to say, I particularly like the um, the little bits of Americana that you threw in, like the convenience store, the colors <laughs> that whoever took those shots, you or uh, Evan, uh, kudos. Those are lovely. Uh, that was Evan again. And yeah, we. Uh, they were having a, a two-day rummage sale in downtown Mitchell, raising funds for uh, some of the kids in the schools there around, um, which was an adventure in itself. But yeah, that's that's uh, um, again, that's that's all Evan. He's uh, mm -hmm. always he's a, a journalist as well as a, a landscape photographer. Peter. Uh a particularly poignant piece was um, the image in which you were setting up the wine. And I'm sure that Mother Nature did most of the lighting for this um, beautiful display, but um, uh, in, you're setting up the wine and, and you're just so happy. And it just so happened that a sunbeam was lighting your face at an angle, um, uh, really displaying your joy. So uh, in my case, honestly, I would say that it is better to be lucky than good. But what you're telling me about Evan is that he probably set the wine table up in a place so that your face would be so beautifully lit that your joy <laughs> would be fully appreciated. <laughs> when did wine not make one happy? Nicely <laughs> <laughs> observed, Rita. Ah, thank you. Yes, thank you. That's a, a great observation. But yes, when did wine not make one happy? Um, <laughs> yeah, the... the um, yeah, it was an amazing adventure and quite a contrast to the last time we were there. Um, I think we need to give credit to, to um, Sherry who, Schneider, Evan's wife, who does most of the uh, sound work on these things and maybe some of the continuity too, I don't know. Um, but I think it's a, a group project between the two of them. Yeah, the music was lovely. So I have a question about your planning process. When you, I know you've been out there a couple of times. Um, were you looking for particular places? Did you know it well enough that you could could do that? Does that question We've, make sense? Sure. Um, well, Evan and I have been out there seven or eight times. Um, and he's been out there by himself and with other people several times, many times. It's um, and he lived in Eastern Oregon for a, um, for a chunk of time too. So he knows the area really well. As far as planning, it was more like Evan called me up and said, um, Sherry's having an art event at our house starting Sunday. We have to, I have to be out of the house and, uh, for a few days. Uh, shall we go camping? <laughs> But, but you already knew some of the area, so it obviously seemed like a good place to, to be away to. Yeah, um, and it's hard to miss. It, it helps, number one, to have a four-wheel drive vehicle. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the places that we went, you couldn't do otherwise. And um, Evan likes his four-wheeling and owns a very nice car. We used to do that in his old, uh, 
1967 Range Rover. Less luxurious. Um, <laughs> yeah, God, it is. It is. I'll tell you. Uh, even so, you get you get jostled around pretty well. Um, and it was amazing. We came back and he was we looked. He was looking at his tires, and he, uh, he had bought brand new ten ply off road tires before we went out there. And there were pieces missing out of the tread, like you wouldn't believe. It was astounding how rough some of the terrain out there was. An ordinary vehicle would not have made it back. Good to know. Well, Pete and Evan, um, thank you so much for sharing that uh, adventure with us. Uh, wonderful images, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank, very nice. very thanks, nice. Pete. I'm kind of under the weather, so I really appreciate you taking over. It's lovely. Any time, my friend. So we've got just enough time to do the uh, November photo challenge. So give me just a second and I'll get that going. Let's see here. Hold on, sorry about that. I'm having a little trouble here. Well, okay, that's the first time that's happened. Hold on just a sec, see if I can troubleshoot this. Do you see my screen yet? No. Okay, hold on. Well, that's embarrassing. Let's see. Is Pete still uh, sharing? Oh, it, it, uh, I don't think so. Pete, you've, no, no, you've I, relinquished I the screen, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I'm sorry about that. I'm a little stuck. I can't seem to get my screen share to go here. Good morning, start, Doug. Yeah, it just won't start. I get the box where it says share your screen. I click it and I don't see anything. Well, you may have to, sadly, you may have to leave and come back, but I'll let you in right away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's try that real quickly and see if that works. Um, I don't know if I can leave the meeting without ending it. Can I? Well, I think so, since I'm a co host, you, but. We'll know in a minute. All right, I'll give it a try. Hold hold tight here. <laughs> 